In this lesson, we'll be creating the preserve regions for the hardware. After completing this lesson, you'll be able to show how to change the appearance of a component, use slot, and apply a tangency constraint. Once you've thought about the process of creating preserve regions a little bit, let's go ahead and get started creating our own for this file. We want to start by again creating an empty component. Notice again that the top level of this file is active, so that's going to be the parent of our new component. We're going to call this new component Preserve Geometry, and we're going to activate it. I'm going to hide Shelf Wood and focus just on our shelf bracket. I'm going to rotate this around and zoom in a little bit. I'm going to left click on this back face to select it, then right click and create a sketch. This automatically brings in the profile for us, so we have access to all four of these bolt holes. I'm going to go to Create, Slot, and we have options in here to do center to center, to do an overall slot, center point, etc. For our purposes, we're going to use the center to center slot option and go from this hole to this hole. Then I'm going to drag this out and left click to place it without adding a dimension. I'm going to do the same thing down here, drag it out, and then hit escape after we've created that second one. The reason I didn't place a dimension is because I'm going to use the geometry of the original bracket to drive that by first left clicking on one of the arcs, control selecting this vertical line, and applying a tangency. We'll repeat the process down here by selecting this arc, control selecting this line, and then hitting escape to get off the tangent constraint. What we've done is we've created a slot that will encompass both bolt holes in each instance. This will be solid geometry that will be used in the generative design as a preserve region. When we talk about preserve regions, we need to understand that the geometry we create will actually be used in the final design. Fusion 360 will generate subdivided or form bodies of the material that goes between these, and it will ultimately keep this geometry behind and will be used to, again, bolt hardware to a wall in this instance. So keep that in mind that we are going to actually keep this long term. Now that we have this information, let's go ahead and create an extrude, and we'll select both of those slot regions, and we're going to drag this forward a distance of minus 0.25. We're going to be creating new bodies and say OK. These new bodies are going to be contained within our preserved geometry component. You can see we now have a bodies folder with body one and body two. We're going to repeat the process by selecting the bottom face of our bracket. We're going to create a new sketch. And again, we're going to use that slot tool going from a center to center slot from here to here. Simply drag that out to create the geometry. And then we're going to go to our tangency constraint and we're going to apply that between these two. I do want to make a note that if you pre-activate the tangency constraint, you don't have to hold down control when selecting the geometry. It's only if you're going to pre-select the geometry and then activate the constraint that you need to use control or shift to select. Once we have both of those, we can finish the sketch. We can use E on the keyboard to extrude. We'll grab both regions and we'll go a distance of 0.25. In this case, it's going to be minus 0.25, and again, these will be new bodies. So now we've created all of the preserve regions that we need to keep in our file. And there's not really much here, but this is the area where we need to bolt to the wooden shelf as well as the wall. Now, this is by no means the perfect or ideal instance of this. I should note that we're making a shelf bracket, which seems fairly straightforward. However, we could use circular bosses in all the whole locations. We could use larger rectangular pads if we needed to spread the load out. We could use any kind of geometry. And these are the things that you need to think about and explore whenever you're working on your own generative designs, because they will have an overall effect on how the geometry is created and what the final result looks like. The last thing that I want to do here is I want to change the appearance of these to be green, so that way I have something on the screen that tells me that this is my preserved geometry. So I'm going to hit A on the keyboard, and I'm going to take my green paint, and hold down the left mouse button, drag it onto preserve, and then close. Now we can activate the top level. I'm going to minimize the preserved geometry. 
I'm going to show my obstacle geometry and hide the shelf bracket and take a look at what we have on the screen. So now we can see the green regions are going to be our preserve regions that are kept behind. The red regions are our obstacles and everything in between is where generative design can explore the idea of creating this bracket for us. There's a lot more to do in terms of setting up a generative design, but this is the basis of the design process. We're not designing the physical bracket. We're not creating the L and the support. What we're really looking at and we're trying to identify is the areas that the design can't go, things like hardware or tool access, and the areas where the design needs to go. And these are our preserves, the green regions that we created. After you've created all these regions, let's go ahead and use the home button to navigate back to a home view and we can save our file. 